longtime conservative public policy advocate and broadcast journalist. He has a media production company and founded a free market education and public pol policy organization. In 2005, his company produced Inconvenient Truth or Convenient Fiction, a documentary response to Al Gore's global warming movement. Tim has been Tim has been a host of nationally syndicated radio program talking baseball for the last eight years. After graduating with a degree in broadcast journalism and political science from Syracuse University, my home city, thank you very much, Tim. Tim began his career as a sports broadcaster in Massachusetts. After moving to Virginia in 1986, Tim founded a media production company called Horizons Television Incorporated, created educational productions for free market groups, and also for the Library of Congress and Smithsonian Institution. Tim has devoted substantial time to conservative and faith-based causes. His father, Joe Donner, was involved in the founding of the National Review magazine and was a strong supporter of conservative causes. Tim is a member of the Fairfax County Republican Committee, which is the largest committee in the state. We are the second largest. He and his wife, Lisa, have lived in Virginia for 25 years and are the parents to two boys. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome U.S. Senate candidate Tim Donner. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. I tell you what, with the lights flickering on and off, I think many of you were aware of the uh, the debate about the debate on December 7th, where the mainstream media has decided that uh, they're going to hand the nomination to the two people that they believe are going to win, and they've tried to short circuit the entire primary process. I gotta think the same people are out there at the electrical grid today trying to short circuit what I, what I have to say today. Are we gonna let them do that? No. It reminds me of August 23rd primary day, which was one of the extraordinary times of this campaign. On that day, my truly better half, Lisa, who's right over here, and with me today, we were out working the polls in Roanoke because I had a speaking engagement in Withville that night. And we had other people working the polls all over the state. And you know, as the, as the voters came out of the polls that day, um, I decided to try a new phrase that I had not tried before, but which really represented my campaign for the U.S. Senate. And so what I said to everyone as they came out of the polls that day is, I'm Tim Donner, I'm running for the United States Senate, and I'm going to Washington to shake things up. <laughs> going to Washington to shake things up. At 2 o'clock that afternoon, the ground shook, and we had an earthquake. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to say what I said had anything to do with there being an earthquake in Washington, but you can draw your own conclusions. So we've had interruptions like this morning with the lights flickering, strange things happening on the campaign trail. But anyway, it's great to be with you this morning. And, uh, you know, in the, in the search for name recognition, because I don't have... I haven't had great name recognition around the state, though I've been at it for six months now on this campaign, and I'm starting to really get traction. Everywhere I go, people are responding really well. But you know, early in the campaign, we were trying everything we could to get name recognition, and some of you will recognize the name Donner as being the same as the Donner Party. <laughs> now, of course, being that that's the last recorded case of American cannibalism, it's not exactly something that we wear as a badge of honor. However, you know, whatever it takes to get the name out, and I have to tell you that when we're in California, where the whole Donner Party occurrence took place, you'd be surprised how well it works when we call restaurants and say, we're the Donner Party and we're really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be shocked how well that actually works. But now we're trying to get our name out through what my candidacy represents. I'm just a citizen and a small businessman 
running on a no business as usual platform, indeed, trying to go to Washington to shake things up. But let me talk a little bit about one of the things I've done during my visit down here to Hampton, Hampton Roads the last two or three days. Had an opportunity yesterday to go to the food bank of southeastern Virginia. Now, one of my campaign advisors said, you know, it would be a good idea to show up at the breakfast wearing the t-shirt that I got yesterday at the food bank, this one right here. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. I look so bad in t-shirts that I just couldn't get myself to wear it today. But I did want to bring it up here to talk just briefly about the food bank. And you know, as Republicans, we talk a lot about the failures of government. And there are too many to be able to discuss them all here because we'd be here for, instead of a couple of hours, we'd be here for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. But the food bank is an example of a successful, well-run, efficient program. All you have to do is, as I did, take a tour of it and you can see how effective it is, how well it operates, and how much it helps the neediest among us. And it's an example of how government can work when it supports organizations that have proven to be effective rather than running the programs themselves so inefficiently as the government does. And the food bank is an example of an organization that depends on volunteers and depends on the contributions of people in the community in order to be effective. So I hope as we celebrate uh, and honor the food bank today that you will all consider contributing your time, your talent, and your treasure to the Food Bank of Southeastern Virginia because I, for one, am convinced that it is a very worthy cause. And this is America. We are the most generous people on the face of the earth. We give more to charity. We do more in the community. We give more. We spend more time volunteering by far than any country in the entire world. And that will have to continue because as conservatives, if we oppose big government, we've got to be able to put our money where our mouth is and step up and do the work that we believe can best be done by nonprofit organizations and by private business rather than by government. Now, I've had so many people ask me the same question since I undertook this adventure of running for the United States Senate as a small businessman who has never run for office before. And the question is, you've got a successful business, you've got a public policy organization, you've had a national radio show for the last eight years, you're an elder in your church, you homeschool your kids, why? You've got a great life. Why would you want to ruin it by running for political office? Good question. Crazy. <laughs> now, don't expect me to answer the question, by the way. But how many of you remember the movie Network 35 years ago? You remember the anchor, Howard Beale? And you remember what he said? And let me say the same thing to you because it's part of what's motivated me to run for the United States Senate. He said, we're in a downturn, we're in a depression, people are losing their jobs, people can't eat, people are marching in the streets. And you know what? He said, I want all of you to get up and go to the window and open the window and yell, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Well, you know what? That happened to me when I watched Nancy Pelosi walk arm in arm with her colleagues across to the U.S. Capitol to ram Obamacare down our throats despite the clearly expressed opposition of the American people. And you know, I got up and I said, I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. 
And what am I going to do about it? I've got to do something. Now, I started a policy organization to try and, and, and apply the founding principles to the issues of today, but I needed to do more. And I guess I'm audacious enough to believe that somehow, as just a citizen and small businessman, that I can really add something, that my voice can make some kind of difference in this U.S. Senate race. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're involved in nothing less than a battle for the very soul of America. And it is a battle between those of us who are trying to restore the constitutional republic that was given to us by our founders, and those who are fighting equally desperately to transform us into a full-blown European-style social democracy. And make no mistake about it, you know it, that's where we're headed. And unless we reverse course, we will be indistinguishable from the rest of the world and we will cease not only to be a constitutional republic, we will cease to be America. And that's why I and you and all of us who are involved in different ways need to stand up and be counted. Now, you know, there is no easier way to, to show, to demonstrate the difference between us and the leftists than to look at the language that we use and that they use. It's emblematic of the difference. Now, we talk about reducing the size and scope of government, and that's exactly what we mean. We talk about lowering taxes, and that's exactly what we mean. We talk about reducing spending, and that's exactly what we mean. And we proudly call ourselves conservatives and libertarians and constitutionalists. As a matter of fact, we not only call ourselves that, but many who aren't that claim to be that. They want that mantle. But look at the other side. They talk about revenue enhancements, which means higher taxes. They talk about government investments, which means more spending. And then they talk, they sum it all up with their poll-tested language manifested in the words, a balanced approach, which means higher taxes and more spending. And they won't, they won't tell you what they really are. We know what they are. They're liberals. But when's the last time you heard a politician get out there and say, vote for me, I'm a liberal? No, they call themselves progressives. They call themselves moderates. But make no mistake about it. They are liberals. They stole that term from those of us who were classic liberals. They discredited it, and now it's a dead letter word. So their language represents, at best, disingenuousness, and at worst, downright dishonesty. They won't tell you what they are because they know if they do, they'll be turned out of office in even greater numbers than they were in 2010. And what does it all come down to? What's ultimately the difference between us and them? The difference is all a matter of control. I'm running for office. I'm running for the United States Senate because I want to allow you to keep more of your own money, to make more of your own decisions, to take greater control of your own lives. But they want to control every area of your life. They want to control your money. They want to control your health care. They want to control your energy. They want to control your food. They even want to control your light bulbs. So it all comes down to a matter of control. And when they made every backroom dishonest political deal they could to squeeze Obamacare by, by the thinnest of margins, that, in my view, is when we cross the line 
from a constitutional republic headed like a freight train towards social democracy. And we must return and reverse course, and we will in 2012, because we're going to boot this guy out of the White House, and we're going to take the Senate, and this time it's going to be with real conservatives who don't spend us into oblivion, and who are going to work with a Republican, a conservative Republican in the White House, and head us back to the course that the founders set for us 250 years ago. I'm interested in going to Washington for permanent change. I'm not interested in tinkering around the edges. I'm not interested in half measures. I'm not interested in working around the margins. I'm interested in going there for permanent change, and that is why, from the beginning of our campaign, from day one, I championed the cause of a cap-and-balance constitutional amendment long before it became fashionable, one that would limit federal spending to a fixed amount of the gross national product, the gross domestic product. That's why I championed a Medicare restructuring plan that will salvage, secure, health care and retirement for the next generation. Most of us in here will experience the benefits of Medicare. But this system is broken to say the least. We have unfunded liabilities of $70 trillion in Medicare. <coughs> so what I propose is for the next generation to allow them to eventually redirect their Medicare taxes into retirement health savings accounts so that they can take control of their own health care make their own health care decisions and spend their own money, which means we'll reduce the costs of health care, we'll improve the quality and create real consumer choice. And I believe that someone like me who stands up and says he's a citizen candidate and wants to represent you should do something to back it up. And that's why I've committed to serving no more than two terms, and perhaps even more importantly, I will not accept my Senate pension. I will exempt myself from the federal employment retirement system and will not accept the generous Senate pension that is available to those who are elected to the upper chamber of the U.S. Congress. Permanent change. Bold leadership for liberty. That's what our campaign is all about. You see the, you see the theme on our lawn signs here. I say to you that the time for complaining about America's problems is over. The time for solving them is now. In 2008, we had a Rorschach test known as Barack Obama. People saw in him whatever they wanted to see, and we rolled the dice on hope and change. And what I say is, fool us once, shame on you. Fool us twice, shame on us. We are involved, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, in nothing less than a battle for the soul of America. America is an exceptional nation. And Virginia is its most exceptional state. But Washington is a mess. And I'm here to tell you that I will dedicate everything in me to go there and help clean it up. Thank you very much, and I look forward to taking your questions.